as I said, this project today features the poinsettia petals bundle. What I like about it is with this poinsettia, it's really easy to create a 3D dimensional flower without having to assemble the flower petal by petal. I do have other poinsettia stamp sets and bundles, but in the past it's been really time consuming and it's taken a long time and I do not want to be fussing putting petals um, to a flower to create the flower. So um, as I said, you can skip over to the blog, pull um, down on the post and get the PDF that'll give you the dimensions on creating this flower. It's beautiful. I love the suite. Um, I am using almost all of the elements from the suite. So this comes from the holiday catalog, the Poinsettia Place Suite. And in the suite, we have the stamp set and the, the cutting tools, the dies, the beautiful paper. We also have the plush Poinsettia specialty paper. We have the beaded pearls the real red sheer ribbon and i'm tossing in one more thing to make this a really really special card i'm also using the red velvet paper pack that's what created that luscious poinsettia on the card so here is the stamp set today i'm only going to be stamping the merry christmas it is a photopolymer set um, so you can see through easily for placement I'm also going to be do, using the dies. Now just as a, as a tip, I have pre-cut everything for today's card so you don't have to see me use the cut and emboss machine, but I did want to give you a couple of tips on the dies. The uh, flower dies are super cool. They're actually two step, well they're two pieces but one step. One has the outline and the other die has the embossing, so you're gonna get the texture in the poinsettia. But I'm gonna tell you what my tip is. These do not align easily. If you wanna save time, every time you go to cut, here's what I did. I flipped it over. This is the side that would be up as I have it on the machine. And all I did was create a little line up line here so that you can see this is where this petal goes on the outline. So I did that on each of the flowers. That way I'm not fussing. Every time I go to cut a flower, um, I could spend a few minutes there flipping it around to find the placement. So again, I did it on this one. Not sure if you can see it on camera. I've got a little black line going through here so that I've got the alignment perfectly um, without a hassle. So right there, it's not quite a line. I know I just got to turn it and marry that line. Now it's ready to cut easily. The die set also includes the leaves and some sp pretty sprays that I have as uh, already pre-cut, as I said. So here's what we're going to need to create the card. I am going to go through step by step. Just did some of the work beforehand. All right, so I am going to start with an eight and a half by 11 inch whisper white and we are going to be cutting that down I'm going to show you how I trimmed it up because I'm going to be scoring as well we also need um, two small strips of the designer series pattern paper the poinsettia place pattern and the measurements on this are seven eighths by four and three eighths and again um, I am going to be posting the, the edited video, so if you need to go back and rewatch to get the measurements, um, you'll be able to do that. And I'm just double checking to make sure I'm on here so that I can see. There we go. I also have a small piece of the plush poinsettia specialty paper. So this one measures four and three eighths by two and an eighth and no worries about where the pattern falls on it. You can kind of see it's off. It's got this swirl, swirly pattern on it. And I wouldn't worry about it being centered because once you post the flower on the project, um, it's not gonna matter whether or not it was centered. Sorry, I'm getting some text in between. I have my phone on um, 
oh, I forget what you call blocked, no calls coming in, but I'm still getting the text coming in. So I pre-cut three layers of the poinsettia, and this is in the, in the red velvet paper, and you can kind of see, hopefully, uh, let's see, I'm trying to show you the embossing that's on each petal. It's just, it turns out to be a gorgeous flower. So I've got the small, the middle, and the large size. I also cut and embossed three of the leaves. There's two larger and one smaller, and that went through in one crank as well because I could put the outline and the embossing through at the same time. I also pre-cut some of the sprays, and I used the gold foil paper. And again, these are in the same die set, so no worries about getting having to pull a variety of products. We've just got three of the gold foil sprays. I have a small scrap of Whisper White. It measures four inches across by three quarters high. I've got a short snippet of that sheer real red ribbon, probably about five inches. And for my embellishment, I'm using the beaded pearls. And I think I've shown you these in the past. They are just amazing. They're gonna add a really nice finishing touch to your project. So that's what, those are the materials I'm using. As I said, I pre-cut and embossed most of the things because I wanted to focus on putting the foundation of the card together. So we're gonna start off with an eight and a half by 11 inch paper. And just so you know, again, when you go over to the blog and pull down for the PDF, it's called a center step fancy fold. Now. I pulled from my vault going back a few years. Um, this was a pro another project I uh, created using the same fancy fold. You can see this was a fall card with that nice little coffee um, art image. The next page on the PDF gives you all the measurements and where you need to score. And it looks like it's eight steps, but it's not gonna be that complicated. I also gave you a little diagram of what your, your eight and a half, or sorry, 11 inch by four and a quarter inch paper should look like. So I've got score lines on here that are dashed, and I've got solid lines that are the cut lines. Let me go ahead and pull that through for you. And again, here's the card we're making. Now, you don't need a special die to create the base of this card. What you are gonna find really helpful is the stamp and trimmer. And let's see, I think, I'm gonna push that aside. I'm gonna trim it down first, and I'm going to cut. So the trimmer has two, two blades. It's got a light scoring blade, and it has the dark cutting blade. I am going to cut the paper in half vertically, so at four and a quarter, and I think you can see right at the top of the screen. That's four and a quarter there. I'm just gonna push it over. I'm gonna close the guide, and I'm gonna cut that right in half. So now I could get two cards from the same uh, eight and a half by 11. So there we go. My next step, I'm gonna push this cutting blade aside for now. My next step is gonna be to score. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky, but again, if you have the PDF right at your side, um, you're just gonna follow along. I'm gonna show you how to do, do everything. So I'm turning it to the 11 inch side. It's gonna go up against the, the uh, top of the trimmer, and I am just gonna come in here at one inch. So I'm gonna bring it down at one inch. Go ahead and close it. Now here's where you have to be paying attention. First of all, make sure you're using the right blade and you are going to score from the zero mark to one inch. So you're only gonna score one inch. And you can see on your trimmer, on the blade, there's a little notch um, that shows you how to align it right to the number. Now I scored down from the one, sorry, I scored from zero to one. Now I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna lift the arm of the, of the trimmer and push the blade down to three and a fourth, or three and one quarter, and I'm gonna score from three and a quarter to the edge of the paper, which would be four and a quarter. So right now, all you've got is score lines. 
and the middle of the card has not been scored, only one inch on each side. Next, I'm just gonna push the paper up to two inches, and I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna score from one inch to zero, and I'm gonna lift the arm and pull the blade down to three and a quarter, down to the edge of the card, which is four and a quarter. Okay, so I've got four score lines at this point. I've got the one at one inch and one at two inch, and only one inch wide. Now I'm going to bring my card's base over to five and a half, and I'm gonna go ahead and extend the arm because I am gonna need the, the width of the paper. And I'm gonna push over to five and a half, I don't know why, as soon as I go live, my texts start coming in. <laughs> the phone just starts exploding. I haven't had any texts most of the morning, and once I go all live, all the texts start coming in. Um, and they're a little bit distracting to me. By the way, if you're here, go ahead and give me a comment that you've arrived. I see Tammy arrived. Um, and, you know, I, I like the interaction. I like to feel like you're following along, not like I'm just talking at you. So give me a comment once in a while. Let me know if, if you understand or if I need to explain something. Um, along the same line, if you like this project, I'm gonna ask you to share it with your friends who are crafty and might wanna make the project as well. Okay, so I've got my scores at one inch, two inch, now I've pushed the card base up to the five and a half inch line on the trimmer. And now what I'm gonna do is make a two and a quarter inch score, but I'm gonna begin at one inch. I'm not gonna start at the edge of the card. I'm gonna bring the score blade down to one inch. Remember, I'm only gonna score for two and a quarter inches, which means I'm gonna stop at three and a quarter. So two and a quarter, so there's one, two and a quarter inch. So between one and three and a quarter is where I'm scoring. So now I've got another score line right in the middle and it's hard to see on the, on the white. There is no score at the outside one inch area. Now I'm gonna slide up to six and a half and I'm gonna make a one inch score from zero to one inch again. So only from zero to one inch, and I am at six and a half inches. I'm gonna repeat like I did the first two scores. I'm gonna start at one inch, or sorry, at zero, and go to one inch, lift the blade, come down to three and a quarter, and score to the edge of the paper. There we go. So now again, I, what, I, what I've got are two scores. They're one inch in length and they go from zero to one inch and from three and a quarter to four and a quarter. So there's my scoring. Now what I'm gonna do is rotate this cardstock 90 degrees to the right. So I'm just gonna rotate 90 degrees. I'm gonna turn right and I'm gonna put it up to the one inch line right here. So now I'm on the short side and I'm actually gonna be cutting now, so I'm gonna push that score blade aside, and I am going to cut between the score lines, so. And what I'm doing, I'm just following along on my instructions too, because I do not want to mess up the cut lines. So what I'm doing I'm gonna cut, oh, let me do it this way. It's easier if I start here. So let's start it at, at zero. That way I've put it right up to the score line. Now I'm gonna push to the right to three and a quarter. So right here, I'm at three and a quarter inch at the top, and I am going to be cutting. So I'm gonna take my score blade, but I am only going to cut from the one inch score to the six and a half inch score. So I'm gonna, gonna bring it up to one inch and I'm gonna cut down to six and a half. So all the way down to six and a half. That's all I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna lift the paper, or sorry, 
lift the arm, slide the paper. Now I'm going to come over to the one inch line. So I was kind of starting ahead of myself. So now again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut between the one inch score and the six and a half inch score. So I'm just reaching over. I'm at one inch. So one inch down and I'm going to cut down to six and a half to the six and a half inch score. There we go. And remove my paper. I am done with trimming and cutting. So now I'm actually going to flip it around and the front of the card, the bottom of the card has the two, two rows of score lines. So the one inch score line and the two inch score line. So I'm gonna fold my card. I'm gonna come in at the one inch and it's gonna be a mountain fold. The two inch is gonna be a valley fold. So all I did was kind of like a Z fold, you can see. So mountain and valley. Now I'm also going to be folding mountain at the six and a half and at the five and a half. So let me flip that over so you can see. So here's my five and a half inch score. Here's my six and a half inch score. So that is the base of the card. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that down so it's nice and flat. And I've got some nice crisp fold lines. And there we go, that's our foundation of our card. So let me walk you through that again. I'm gonna open this up. By the way, on my PDF, we're looking at the diagram here. I'm gonna flip this over so you can see. My diagram is actually a little bit smaller but here's my one inch score, and it goes across to one inch. Uh, here's my two inch score, and again, it's only one inch in width. Then I'm gonna come down to six and a half inch score, but in between there, I also scored at five and a half, but I didn't score all the way to the edges of the paper. The solid line is the cut line. That's this cut right through here. And when I put it back into position, you're gonna see I've got my step up card. Here's my center step, and that's the fancy fold. So what do you think? Do you think you could actually do that? Uh, let's see. Okay, <clears throat> we are ready to decorate now. So there's our center step fancy fold card. I'm gonna bring in all of my elements. I've got my two pattern papers that are seven inches, or sorry, seven eighths of an inch wide and four and three eighths inches tall. And I am just going to adhere these to these one inch panels on each side. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my stamp and seal plus, because I don't get along with my regular stamp and seal. And I am going to, let's see, if you flip this up, you can see what's gonna go right up to that six and a half inch score line. And I'm gonna center that there and it comes right down. So unfolded, it kind of looks like it's short, but it actually went right up to the two inch score line. And when you push it open, there you go, you can see that pattern paper right along the side. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I find it really easy just to align this to the score up at the top and you're gonna have a tiny, like a 1 16th inch border on each side of the designer series paper. So my next step, remember I, my, I have the plush paper and this one measures two and an eighth by four and three eighths. This is gonna go in the center panel and the stamp and seal plus does a great job of being invisible on this paper. Sometimes you can see through vellum with the, see the adhesive through the vellum, but that's not the case with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that down right to the center panel. And there we go. There's our base of our card. Let's see, flip that through. 
there's the front of the card that is amazing plush paper with that all that swirl it's just gorgeous all right now i'm going to bring in all of my embellishments and create the flower first so i have three layers of the red velvet paper and i'm going to use my tombow liquid glue to adhere all the layers together and let's see if this is going to work for me just a tiny dab in the middle and i'm going to go ahead and stack that i'm going to rotate the petals between the previous layer and the same on the next layer there we go and we've got the poinsettia layer or poinsettia flower ready to go i am next going to add my leaves and my gold sprays so i've got three of each i've got three gold sprays and these are just the gold foil paper and i have three leaves as well and to secure these behind the poinsettia flower i'm using my mini glue dots I'm just going to come back in and I'm going to grab one dot per petal. And these leaves have that great embossing on them. You can see the veins, hopefully, you can see right through here. I'm wondering if, let's see if I give you more light. This is a little bit better. Not sure if that helped or not but you can kind of see those veins coming through. So I am going to pop these right behind the flower. So one at the top, maybe one a little bit lower to the side. It's just kind of like flower arranging. Bring it in here. And then I'm gonna bring one a little bit lower. There we go, almost like a triangle. So there's my flower now i'm going to add those sprays right behind and again with the mini glue dots so i just take the roll of the dots and bring the the embellishment right up to the dot i'm going to bring that in behind all right There we go. And you know, I'm looking, I can see, see some comments. I'm not seeing many, so I'm wondering if my video stopped. Hopefully it's going still. There we go. And I have one final spray. And I'm gonna put that right behind on the lower edge there. And then finally, I'm gonna add that red, real red sheer ribbon. It actually measures like five inches. I'm just gonna fold it in half. Add a glue dot to secure it behind. And let's see, just gonna bring that in right back there. All right, so next, yay, hey Barb, thank you. I love all of the products in this suite. The, the papers are just amazing. This plush paper is just so elegant and the red velvet pa paper really makes this poinsettia flower look vibrant and bold. So a lot of pretty elements on this card. To secure the poinsettia, Art, I'm just going to add my Tombow liquid glue. It's the best adhesive when you really want to make it stick. I'm just going to put it right down through here, kind of right in the center. And you can see the cards coming along. There we go. So I know so far it probably looks like a lot of work and I'm going to say the first one that you do is going to be seem complicated. They do get easier as you go along. 
So making multiples by the second, third card, it's going to be much easier because you're going to totally understand the, um, the engineering behind the, the fold. All right, so next I'm going to add my sentiment and I'm also using the stamp set. This Merry Christmas sentiment comes right from the coordinating stamp set and I'm using soft suede. It is a photopolymer stamp, which means I need to stamp on my piercing mat. So there we go. And you could stamp directly onto the base here, but I'm going to tell you the banner that we create, it's going to be popped up with dimensionals. So it's going to look like it's coming at you. Plus, um, once you have put this much work into your card, you want to make sure that um, the last step, the inking step, doesn't mess up the card. So sometimes we have a tendency to maybe stamp upside down or something doesn't get stamped fully. I'm just going to center that right in there. This avoids that problem because if you didn't get a perfect inking, you could just get another scrap of paper and re-ink so that your card stays perfect. All right. And I'm going to add the banner tails to each side of the greeting. I'm going to use my tailored tag punch. Just bring that in. I'm going to bring it up to the edge. Makes a really nice ribbon edge. And I'm going to do that on both sides. All right, so there's our sentiment. The last thing I'm going to do is add some dimensionals here and pop it up on the card. There's one, two, just two dimensionals, one on both sides. And I'm going to center it right on that one inch step at the bottom. There we go. And there's just one final pop of pizzazz that I'm going to add. I'm going to bring in that uh, beaded pearl. This has three pearls with that silver backing on it, and it even has like some mini tiny sparkly rhinestones. It just makes the flower look so real. It's, you get quite a few um, embellishments in this as well. I think you get uh, 24, if I'm correct, or 18, sorry. 18 so you get quite a few in the pack I do secure it with uh, glue dots someone asked me earlier this week if you could use the Tombow liquid glue and I wouldn't although that's always my favorite adhesive because of the metal here I wouldn't want the glue to get messy and ooze out from behind the embellishment. So I use three glue dots. I put one behind each pearl and hopefully that'll make really make it stick. Put it right in the center and there you go. There's your project and it is just amazing. It's going to sit on someone's mantle nicely because of that step. All made with the petal place sweet. There we go. There's my two cards. And these are really special cards. It looks like it takes a while, but if you're getting started on your holiday projects now, you have plenty of time. You can actually get these done quickly once you've done the first one. Um, again, just love the pattern paper, the plush paper, the red velvet paper, the gold that's on here. That sheer ribbon and that special pearl embellishment makes a really special card. Um, what do you think? Please give me a comment. And again, if you like the project, share it with your friends. They can follow along as well. And uh, you can click over to the blog, AnnaMariePalmerin.com, and get a PDF for the measurements and the steps. If you're not on the mailing list, you can sign up for the mailing list at the same time. I am here every Friday, 2 o'clock, for Friday 